And it is time for the Berardelli bonus. So Rebecca showed you these numbers about 15 minutes ago, and they're forecasting 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, five major, which is way above our average. So let's get a little bit more in depth on this. First of all, it's the highest April forecast they have ever issued from Colorado State University, but it is still lower than all the computer models they use to make the forecast. Now they're calling for a accumulated energy of 210 units, the normal is 120 units. So this is forecast to be a hyperactive season. Here's the reason why. All that red across the Pacific Ocean, that's El Nino, but that's beginning to fade as we're starting to see that blue creep in. Soon it will all be blue across the Pacific, and that means a La Nina will form by summer. That will weaken the wind shear across the Atlantic, and that favors more storms to form. Also, Ocean temperatures are at historic levels. Take a look at the ocean heat content. It is normal for July right now, but you, we're only in the beginning of April. So that is something we've never seen before. So the result of that is likely going to be a, a hyperactive season. And I wanted to kind of localize it a little bit more. So why don't we talk about that? And so what you've done here is you've taken a look at El Nino storms versus La Nina storms that came within 400 miles of the center of Florida. And so certainly we're seeing some El Nino storms, even with fewer storms they did, that did impact the state, but a lot more activity on La Nina years, 19 storms versus 28. Never know if we're going to get hit directly, but we prepare every year. 